Hello everyone. Welcome back to yet another example of selling Hobson by the pound. And this week we got a kind of a mixture of things I think you'll be interested in. Um, we're back partly uh, in the EMI. I'm still, I've been telling you for weeks I'm working my way through this, but I promise you I'm almost through all of the EMIs. But here I uncovered uh, an Elgar uh, Caroticus um, with um, Groves conducting the Royal Liverpool Philharmonic, and it was recorded at Liverpool Hall. Got this nice um, libretto in it, and uh, these beautiful, I love this label, Angel Series, um, yellow Angel Series. It's pressed by EMI in the UK, the SLS 998. Uh, let's see what I write. One of Elgar's uh, most Dynamic and powerful choral compositions recorded by Christopher Parker for EMI. Remember Bishop and Parker, Parker being the one that's the recording engineer. At Philharmonic Hall, Liverpool, UK in 1977. Huge sound and top performance by Groves LPO. Rare set, I put perfectly recorded. Orchestra and vocals, top, top copy, quiet surfaces. And by the way, um, I know people have commented on me just tossing these records down. And I just want you to know that um, I do value these records, but, you know, they're not all that fragile. You know, they and sometimes they've been sitting for a while. And so uh, they like to move around a little bit. Uh, but I will be a little more careful when I put them down now. Anyway, just just having a little fun with that. Here's Martin on conducting uh, compositions by uh, Dukas uh, Symphony in C. I put very dynamic recording done in France with Jean Martin on conducting very quiet services. Top recommendation, ASD 2953. Here we've got uh, Jacqueline Dupre, famous cellist, Japanese pressing of same, featuring Dupre on cello accompanied by Berenbaum uh, and the CSO, the Chicago Symphony Orchestra. Famous performance, Dupre effort is superb, as is the Chicago horn section. This is a beautiful performance in every way, and the pressing is extremely quiet, allowing the big cello to jump out, I put, into the room. Amazing top, top recommendation. Japanese copy. Um, here we go, Rostopovich, uh, Dvorak Concello Concerto, uh, Giolini. Uh, Rostopovich conducting the um, the um, uh, LSO? No, LPO. And um, I say highest recommendation, great copy, very delicate sound, and introspective slower pace chosen by Rostopovich. Lush and open recording. Giolini cello is very nicely highlighted with delicious and lush sound, near silent services. This gets a wow. So there you go. All right, don't miss that one. Here's an interesting record. This is a, an EMI angel, right? And it's Giesiging playing piano. So I say stunning copy of this mono record recording and pressed in the UK by EMI angel. Played on a mono cartridge, which I have, this LP is stunning in both performance and recording. Gaysaging playing is legendary. Incredibly quiet surfaces. Wow. Even this gets a wow. So there you go. I love this, too. It's got this kind of textured, textured cover. So it looks kind of generic, but it's actually kind of cool. Here we go, Elgar, Pomp and Circumstance, uh, Barbaroli and the Philharmonia Orchestra. Stunning postage stamp dog pressing with dead silent surfaces. Amazing recording from 1966. Uh, Barbaroli at his best. I say big, big audiophile sound. Great, great copy. So there you are. Elgar, Pomp and Circumstance. Always, always a fun thing. Here we go with uh, Elgar Violin Concerto, Hugo Bean, um, the music group of London Quartet. Um, this is an interesting, it's an EMI purple label with the postage stamp dog. Um, it says big EMI sound with lush piano and violin spotlighting. Generally quiet surfaces make this record a keeper. Highest recommendation. You don't see that record very often. Here is, I think, 
the last of these alto high fidelity reissues of EMI, very popular EMI records. So this is one that we've seen a few times before, but these are new, unplayed. Uh, this HP TAS Super Disc List item, Alto High Fidelity Reissue from Original Master Tapes, cut at Abbey Road Studios and pressed at Palace in Germany. See, it's even got a limited edition sticker, Alto High Fidelity on the back. And they put the little <laughs> uh, sticker over the dog and horn, right, because of the copyright issues. But anyway, this is a famous performance of the Bells Previn LSO. So there you go. Another Alto High Fidelity reissue. Remember, it's the, they did a pretty authentic job with the white and gold label. This is uh, Barbaroli Conducts English String Music, Eldar, Elgar, sorry, and Vaughn Williams. Uh, new copy, never been played. So there you go. Reissue from the original master tapes. Here's uh, Bizet, the Carmen uh, uh, AST 2448, another Alto High Fidelity um, reissue, unplayed copy. If you don't have this, it's impossible to find now. Here, it looks like a second copy of one of these Sheffield Lab direct to disc Remember the green label? And I told you about direct to disc before. It, it takes away the tape stage, so they just have the performance, and while the guys are performing, they mix it, and it goes straight to the lathe. So you have to play continuously, by the way. That's the big issue with these direct to discs if, the, if, the, if they have a false start or something, then you gotta start all over again because there's no way to pause the lathe. Once the lathe is going, that's it, right? So you have to play an entire side and then stop the lathe and the guys stop and so forth. So direct disc is really hard, but what you get from it is, you know, something that's got a stage taken out of that chain uh, between the live performance and this vinyl and you can hear the difference. Um, when, when you listen to a direct disc recording, there's a sharpness, a liveliness that's really, really difficult to get on um, conventional recordings that involve uh, analog tape even. So there you go. Um, this is Larry McNeely, Jeff Levin, and Jack Skinner. It's called uh, Confederation. Yeah, there you go. All right, we got some soundtracks from my soundtrack collection. This is music from the... Original soundtrack for Frankie's House, music by Jeff Beck and Jed Leiber. So this uh, this is a nice uh, nice recording, and yeah. So I just realized something, and I'm just gonna put it on tape. <laughs> Check this out. This is a defective pressing. The label when it got pressed slipped off and so now the label is pressed into part of the grooves i don't know maybe we'll offer this because side b is okay but we need to let everybody know that side a is a defective pressing you could you can't play it well you could play actually the first two tunes and then after that you got to be careful because you're going to have a problem anyway there you go that's fun you don't get that very often here's uh the original soundtrack from Blue Collar, um, you got a number of different, this is music by uh, Jack Nietzsche, um, really some interesting stuff here. And then you got Howlin' Wolf on a couple of tracks, and Leonard Skinner, uh, Saturday Night Special, and, uh, but some nice things by Jack Nietzsche, a sealed copy. Little Man Tate soundtrack um, got some interesting stuff on this um, sealed copy and uh, there you go queen's logic original motion picture soundtrack uh, cheap trick marvin gay earth wind and fire eddie money doing baby hold on you got uh, mott the hoople all the young dudes it's got a nice little van morrison um, is on this record as well. J.D. Souther and Johnny Nash. So there you go. Here is the soundtrack to She's Having a Baby. Um, let's see, who's on this? Anything of any interest? This is a sealed copy, by the way. XTC is on this. Brian Ferry is on this. Everything But the Girls. This is really an 80s. Kate Bush is on this. 
So, um, yeah, some nice stuff on this. And, um, yeah, so there you go. Now, here's an interesting thing that I found in my collection. It's lacquer. And there's been a lot of controversy about lacquers. I remember Michael Frimmer and uh, uh, one of the record dealers from um, Arizona got into a big discussion, let's call it, about the uh, goods and the bads about lacquers. And um, while I won't weigh in on that conversation, I'll just say that I've listened to many, many lacquers. 14-inch. Um, this was cut down from a 14-inch lacquer, so trimmed so that it plays on 12-inch. And this is uh, Sidney Bechet uh, from a record called The King of the Soprano Saxophone. It's uh, J Good Time Jazz. Lacquer of the B-side of Good Time Jazz, uh, release L12013, recorded in 1956 by Contemporary Records in Hollywood. Lester Koenig, produ Lester Koenig producer. This is an unplated original spare lacquer that was originally 14 inches, been trimmed to 12 inches, and is playable on modern turntables and cartridges. The sound is unlike LPs pressed on vinyl in that all the nuance of what the cutter head imparted from the tape is all here. You cannot get closer to the tape than a lacquer, and despite being delicate, and that's fair, this lacquer plays superbly. Um, putting the listener as close as you can ever get to the original recording. I put stupidly dynamic and realistic playback qualities, scary detail, and speed of transient attack. This gets three wows, believe it or not. It's pretty cool. So it's playable, and it's never been plated. Um, there's issues about how many times you can play it. I've never run into that problem before. But this is a single-sided B-side of that contemporary, uh, I mean, uh, sorry, this Good Time Jazz, Contemporary Records owner. Uh, it was a sub-label of Contemporary. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty darn cool. I played a little bit of it, and it's like, wow. So I still have mm, some various copies of the Classic Records catalog right? Some of which, you know, I just can't quite let go of. I have multiple copies. I have the RTI 180 gram. I have the classic 200 gram. I have the classic clarity version. I have the classic uh, pressed by classic versions and so forth. And I, I keep going through it a little at a time. And, and I'm not pulling out much anymore because I'm having a difficult time letting go. But there's a few things that I went through and pulled out that you should be interested in. Uh, this is actually not a classic release, but something that was pressed by classic, done by classic, for Mosaic. And it's this Thelonious Monk Quartet with John Coltrane at Carnegie Hall. And they found a mono tape, and they um, worked it, and we made a record. And this is a copy of that that's sealed. Um, impossible to find anymore. Here is uh, a copy of Hot Rats. Uh, clarity version, um, and this is um, sealed from my archive, and there you go. Here we have uh, Martin Scorsese presents Jimi Hendrix. This is from that movie. Um, got Red House, Voodoo Chili, um, uh, Country Blues, Georgia Blues, My Friend, Midnight Lightning, some of which were previously unreleased. Uh, two LP set that we did on colored vinyl. This is probably on blue vinyl would be my guess. And then, um, oh, I like this, Tubular Bells. Uh, this is Mike Oldfield. We did this from the original Master Tapes, uh, 1973 Virgin Records. And um, this is a sealed copy. And finally, Money Jungle. Uh, we put this out and um, this was we put it out from the original three-track master tape, and it had never been put out that way before. It's Ellington, Mingus, Max Roach, recorded uh, live in New York City, uh, September 17th, 1962. And this is a sealed 200-gram copy from Classic Records. So there you go. That's this week's offering, and I wish everyone good luck. Thanks.